find distressing. Police emergency. Warning markers for firearms. Get on the ground. Block it in, block it in, block it in. He's now off in the field. Derbyshire's traffic cops. It is 1.65. Try and keep up with it. Battling crime in the middle of the country. Open the door now! He smashed down a bollard. How he's done that? He ain't done nothing. From the picturesque peaks. <laughs> treating it as life threatening. To the inner cities. Yeah, he's done me. This side, this side. He's going to decamp. It's a decamp, decamp, four runners. Under threat. You do what I tell you. Do not put your hands anywhere near your pockets. And at risk. Watch him. Montrop, Montrop. Run two traffic cars now. Around every corner. Don't bulk it. There's a new challenge. Hands on the wall. For the traffic cops. Coming up. Now lane three. It's about to stop. Young drivers putting lives at risk on the roads. Is there a stinger? Should he come off at 34? A search for a wanted man <laughs> comes to a crashing end. Oh, a horrendous smash leaves a motorcyclist's life in the balance. Then cross the road straight into him. It looks terrible. And the traffic cops swoop on a suspected car thief and are shocked to find he's only 17. Who's you been stopped, mate? That car's been reported stolen, OK? Yep. Putting everybody's lives at risk on the road, driving them speeds. Do you want me to go a bit further down, just in case? Yeah, it could do, yeah. yeah. On the M1, 25 miles north of Derby, Sergeant Scott Riley and his team are looking for a young suspect who's on the run from the police. Just at 29 Alpha, I'll um, go up the slip. Look for a blue three series of shackles. With around 3 million young drivers on the UK's roads, Policing them is a round-the-clock challenge. When you're dealing with young people, it, it does bring another element to the job. It matters not whether they've been involved in crime or whether what they've done is ridiculous uh, and against the law. I've got a duty of care. So we're just going to put ourselves on an observation ramp and we're looking for a 3 Series BMW where there's a wanted male on board from Bolton. It's just a little bit further down the M1. Uh, we've got Dan in place at Junction 30 to try and sight it, so we're just going to see if it comes past us. Possibly. Looks like he's sighted it. Yep, definitely is. It's all right. Yeah, definitely was that one. We're still on a couple of stops up at 30, Sarge. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, then we've got plenty of units, uh, should it fail to stop, to uh, pick it up after us. So, uh, yes, yes. While Scott and Dan tailed the suspect, other units rushed to support them. So the tactics we're going to use is uh, we're both in unmarked cars. Uh, which is quite handy. Dan's going to show himself out, put a uh, police follow me on. With the two unmarked cars closing in, the BMW driver increases his speed. One zero zero, plane three, somewhere. And I have the eliminated the vehicle, vehicle is now lane three, it's about to stop half a mile from your community. Yeah, and when the other units are with us, um, are we okay to do a get by um, and then uh, try and pull some tactics on? Yes, sir. Uh, I'll get a um, passing to the A4 as well. Thank you, Speed. It's 130, plane 3. I'm going to go for a keep on chaps at the next exit. Yes, yes. Dan's going to cover off the slip road at 31 to keep him on the motorway. If the suspect turns off the motorway, it'll be much harder for the officers to stop him. Stand by, blocking my uh, path. 
He wants to try and lose us on, on the A roads. He knows that while ever he's going on the motorway, we're going to be able to get tactics in place. You can tell from the manner of his driving that he's willing to take any risk to get away from the police. 100 yards, 200 yards, 100 yards. Stand by. The tactics pay off and they force the BMW to stay on the motorway. Lane two, speed one, three, zero. Such reckless speed means the officers need to end the chase quickly. This is lane three, speed is one, one, zero. Ten minutes into the pursuit, the suspect driver is heading out of Derbyshire. Yes, yes, we are for the resources, 34 North. If you can keep it north, please. Yes, yes, Junction 34 North. Once again, the BMW driver goes for an escape route. Yeah, he's looking to try and get off at 33. We're going to try and keep him on. Yeah, is there a stinger? Should it come off at 34? Yes, yes, we're trying to do the keep on at 34. Yes, yes, it's 200 yards, 400 yards, lane one, straddling lane two. Stand by. Stand by. End pass, yes, yes, and it is committed, committed at junction 34 of the M1. With the exit blocked, the chase heads into South Yorkshire. South Yorkshire needs to be in position. Sheriff, yeah, three cars just back in town. Committed, committed, pass 35 northbound. As they approach an exit, the suspect has another chance to escape. Coming off the air. Half half on, it's 35 alpha. Stand by on the approach to the RA. So we're now letting South Yorkshire it's, take uh, over the Junkies seat. coming up behind you, we'll do a, a single lane keep on me. It's now South Yorkshire's area. So we've got one. Five cars with us. A police helicopter is on its way to help keep track of the BMW. We can see from the road conditions that they're now slippy. We can drop back and let the helicopter take it, which is a great news. As they enter a clear stretch of road, the officers make their move. <laughs> Desperate to escape, the suspect rams the police car. I'm amazed at there's four males in that car. Why you would drive at that speed when you're carrying passengers is absolutely beyond me. Um, if that vehicle had have flipped, rolled, been involved in the crash, that's four fatalities waiting to happen. A 20-year-old driver is detained, together with three passengers, one of whom is just 17 years old. This is driver. That one's driver. Did I manage to make it that far? Uh, I've no idea, mate. Me, no idea. I think it was more where we're from. He's got no idea. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you reckon we would have had the chance of making it back there? Never. <laughs> yeah, can you give me a description of the wanted male, please? He's got a cut, large scar near elbow, right arm. Tribal tattoo, right arm. You got any tattoos on you? Nah. None at all, none on your arms? Nah, nah. You got a driving license, Pat? Yeah. If he's not the one to mail, we'll take him for the English driving. Uh, take him back to Derbyshire and sort him for that. Yeah. Um, like I say, we'll go search for the card and see what, and then we can make a decision on the others the based on that, yeah. yeah. The young driver isn't the wanted suspect, but he is unlicensed and uninsured and he's arrested for dangerous driving. They're not caring to get insurance, not caring to pass a driving test. They are driving recklessly, day in, 
day out. Apparently, there's possibly some cannabis in there. Yeah. Okay, I'll sort that. With small amounts of cannabis found and damage to a police car, the young suspect is going to the police station. But his passengers, including the 17-year-old, leave Scott with a problem. I'm now in a situation where I've got a juvenile from Bolton. We've taken the car off them. I've now got to work out how we're going to get them back safely because ultimately, until they're at home safe, it's my responsibility. The passengers are taken to a local service station to arrange their way home. In this case, I've got enough confidence that, that they were all friends and they were going to look after the one that was under 18. Sign on there. Just there, pal. Just say that you've received the warning. Traffic cop Dan Mitchell is dealing with one of them for possession of cannabis. We're seeing ever present at the minute. Um, we're in these little, like, sweet type bags, so they look more appealing to the younger person uh, for the cannabis. And there's probably, I don't know, a gram or two just in there, I don't know if you can see it. Just little bits of bud. Very strong. Dealing with a car in close quarters at M speeds is frightening. You are acutely aware that you are in a car doing over 100 miles an hour. To go to those lengths for just no documents is frightening, really, because what he's done is absolutely dangerous. Coming up. Yeah, for information, they're, uh, they're working on one uh, female now on the floor. A shocking crash leaves a motorcyclist fighting for her life. It's not, uh, it's not looking particularly good. She's off her. Yeah, right, all right, no worries. And a young car driver's facing serious questions. Do you use cannabis or cocaine? I, I had some last night, a little bit of cocaine. Police control room. See how many vehicles are involved? Derbyshire police deal with nearly 2,000 accidents on the roads every year, many of which involve young drivers. Yeah, we'll get officers there as soon as we can. Four vehicles on TC, three motorbikes, and one car. Traffic cop Andy Swift is responding to an urgent call about a potentially fatal crash. We've got one unconscious person involved. We've got the uh, EMAS travelling as a Cat 1 and Heli Men are also on the way. We'll probably be first on scene, I would imagine, unless the local officers get there slightly before. And motorbike involved collision, unfortunately. That's the nature of the beach. People come round here because it's lovely roads to ride, but sometimes some cars come a cropper through either their own fault or the fault of other drivers. Derbyshire gets a lot of motorbikes. Uh, they come from all over, sort of flood in from, from hundreds of miles away. I would say that when we do have motorbike incidents on some of the roads, they usually don't end up very uh, positively. You are not going to come off the winner against a car, because it's a big metal box at the end of the day, and that's always going to win. Yes, I found it. Ambulance is here in A for information. Yes, mate, vehicle, stop, stop, stop. Yeah, for information, they're, uh, they're working on one uh, female now on the floor. They've got the uh, machine that gives the uh, chest compressions. I can't speak with them as to what's happening at the moment, because obviously they're, uh, they're sorting it out, and obviously it's not, uh, it's not looking particularly good. There's a group of five, and three have gone through safely. Two have been wiped out, and then the others have come back. Also at the scene, and leading the investigation, is Sergeant Scott Riley. Experience tells you when you turn up at a scene like that, you can see that doctors are doing CPR, they're doing chest compressions. I know that we're going to lock the scene down for probably four to five hours, if not longer. It's on a stretch of road to one of Derbyshire's biggest tourist attractions on a sunny Sunday evening. With an air ambulance on its way, paramedics are working on a woman on the road and her husband is nearby with a leg injury. Which, which motorbike were you? I was in the red one. The red one at the front? Yeah, yeah OK. Yeah, you been involved with this? You're involved with this? She's off road. Yeah, right, all right, no worries. He hit a red on. Yeah. It was coming down the road, hit the grass verge, and he veered across the road straight into it. 
as the air ambulance arrives. The victim's condition is critical. They're a large group of motorcycles. Hello. Yeah, I, I've, I've assumed as much. Yeah, it's just information. I've just been uh, approached by one of the, I think he's the uh, doctor. He's, uh, he said it's uh, most likely going to be fatal. And he needs to speak to the 27-year-old driver to find out how the accident occurred. Pardon, sorry. You're the person driving, is that all right? Okay, yeah. Yeah, no, is, is there anyone else with you at all? No. All right. If you look at where the bike is and where the car is, and it is quite clear um, that the car's travelled onto the wrong side of the road and it's picked up that first motorcyclist. It looks like she's not going to survive, I'll be honest. It looks terrible. Sometimes better to not see. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right. We need to subtly and discreetly just take the person that's caused it off to one side, sit them in a sterile area, so they are a suspect for our investigation. Mate, you have to sit back on, mate. It's just easy, mate. Get your attic away. All right, you sit in there, mate, yeah? To go first off, mate, just what's happened, basically? Coming along here, like I've driven this road for loads of Yeah, right. Just ended up going up this grass bank. I've just gone to the left too much on the road. Right. I'd, I've lost concentration or... Right. Um, I, I, I have had, yeah, my bad. I had one pint. Yeah, that's fine. All right, mate. Well, that's, that, that don't mean... I just mean I'm just... Yeah, you've been honest, mate. I appreciate that. I tell you, Michelle. Have you ever done a breathalyzer or a, a drug swipe before? Of course, you've been involved in a road traffic collision. Okay, um, there's a requirement at the roadside initially to provide a sample of breath and also a sample of saliva. Okay, Fine. wait, right, blow into it as hard as you can. Yeah, go on, 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 go on. They are zero, mate. Bob on. That's what we like to see in it. Zero. So that's all good, mate. Okay. Um, do, you, do you use um, cannabis or cocaine? Uh, I actually, I, I had some last night. A little bit of cocaine. Right. Okay. All right. So you just need to open your mouth and stick your tongue out. It's not invasive. Just put your tongue out. Like that. The side of your mouth. Oops, stop. Got to get there. And this side. And your tongue again. So put it in there like that. I think that's positive for cocaine. What do you think? I think so. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Very, very slight what it is, isn't it? He's already yeah. admitted he's had it last night. Yeah, that's it. Five, we've just confirmed the female uh, deceased, 1755. Yeah, unfortunately, um, the lady's been um, declared deceased at the roadside by the doctor. Um, and as at this time, the lad's um, failed for cocaine as well. So he'll be taken to custody where he'll have to give a, an evidential sample, but he's going to be arrested for causing death by dangerous driving. Right. Um, this, the drug slide, unfortunately, as you can see, has very slightly come back to cocaine. You can see there's an extremely small line there at the bottom, okay? Um, so at this time, um, you're under arrest for two offences, okay? One of which is driving a motor vehicle, I'll say we're describing it for a substance, namely cocaine, okay? And the other one might be a shot, you're also under arrest on suspicion of death by dangerous driving. Fortunately, the um, lady was now deceased. Um, so, what's going to happen, mate? All right, we're not going to, I know you're not a bad lad, is that all right? We don't want to hear any more about it. You're under caution now, so your chance to get explain what's gone off will be an interview. All right, where you can have legal representation from the solicitor's office. So All right. She's now been pronounced dead at five to six. So five just to six. Yeah. He's, he's fully aware. He's ringing his son. Right? Are you listening? I've not made it. A car. A car. has been all over the road. She's hit it, and she's. Listen, I need, I need you, I need you to be strong from it. And it's particularly traumatic. Isn't it, it is a particularly traumatic one, isn't Especially it? Especially with all the it's friends and everything. Uh, and that's what always makes it worse, isn't it? And and that, yeah. so um, big because it's clear to see they are so innocent in, in what's happened. Well, thank you, Kevin. Cheers, mate. The car driver is taken to the police station to be interviewed. It's a horrendous scene. You've, you've got the lady herself, who's a victim uh, of the crash, and she's riding with her husband uh, and the best friend. Um, and to have those present at the scene and to see them going through what they're going through, that's upsetting for any police officer, any member of the emergency service to, to sit and watch. And ultimately, you know that at that time, their life is about to be destroyed.
I'm not going to go through everything that you've been through. Officers have got your contact details, is that correct? OK. Now, you can see looking at that vehicle that every single airbag has gone off in that car. Uh, you can see the heavy front impact to the vehicle. And you can also see on the windscreen what we call is the bullseye, which is where the casualty um, has first impacted with that car and then she's been pushed onto the side and into the verge. Um, it's a really horrible incident um, and you can see from the damage to that vehicle that the injuries that that will cause to the human body is, is unsurvivable. It's really, really sad for the family of the deceased because there is absolutely nothing that she could have done to uh, avoid that oncoming vehicle. Coming up. A 17 year old learns a tough lesson. That car's been reported stolen, okay? Yep. For the and lorry thieves are brought to justice. Open the door! Get out! That vehicle has hit a VR camera um, two minutes ago. Has he got past Ripley yet? At the start of a 12 hour night shift, Traffic cops Adam Shipley and Nick Rice have received an immediate alert for a stolen car being driven by a young suspect. And it's, it's quite commonplace, you come on, all these, all these plans, what you want to do, and then you turn your radio on and you're pretty much straight out to a job. Yeah, there's been a stolen car from South Yorkshire come down the motorway, um, so we think it's around this bit of road. Stolen cars, like the one being tracked, are often transported by young men and later used by organised gangs to commit further crimes. Un unknown who's driving it, you know, we don't know where they're going, if they've got anything in the car, if there's how many people in the car, you know, if there's a team of people, if they're using that stolen car to come and commit some crime, you know, we just, just don't know. From CO3, possible contact, just passing the entry slit in lane two. As Adam keeps an eye on the suspect from a distance, Nick and other units are close by in case there's a chase. Yeah, it's in lane two still. Can't confirm if it's the subject vehicle. It's uh, speed probably seven zero. Obviously, I'm in a marked vehicle, so depending on how observant it is, we'll be aware of uh, my presence. Our ultimate aim is to get that vehicle to like you know zero miles an hour and get the driver and anybody else in the car detained safely. We're just trying to get the unmarked cars at the moment up ahead, trying to confirm it's the subject vehicle. Just waiting for some more marked cars. And we'll look at doing some preemptive tactics on it. It's going to be the one. It's um, speed, 95 miles an hour. The car is edging towards 100. That makes it a lot more difficult for us to safely do tactics on it due to the speeds involved. Now, with a total of six units following the BMW, the team are closing in. We're going to hopefully get an opportunity to take it at the lights. We've got enough units with us. We don't want to keep following it. Our plan is to basically take the driver by surprise. Hopefully, he's not aware of our unmarked cars and we can get a stop before he's even had time to think what's going on. The junction ahead gives the officers an ideal chance to strike. traffic light control roundabout and you know we need a bit of luck sometimes before he knew what was happening um, he had you know Audis and BMWs every, everywhere he looked he was trying to buy, buy police cars and, and cops and he was completely shocked by it all I think Who's you been stopped, mate? That car's been reported stolen, OK? Really? Yep. No, we don't start like this if you're not wearing your seatbelt, do we? Sit in the back of there, my friend. We'll get you to custody. That's when we'll need to speak to you in a little bit. Oh, 
it stinks of cannabis as well. Okay, we'll get him we'll get him drunk while, don't we? The young driver is just 17 years old and hasn't even passed his driving test. Not much more than a kid, basically. As if you know you get involved in a pursuit or something with somebody that age, um, they're not experienced, they don't know what they're doing behind the wheel. They can crash, they could hurt themselves, they could hurt somebody else. It's a relief that, that you've got them cuffed up without anybody being hurt. He stinks of cannabis, so we're gonna give him a drug wipe as well, see if he's got basically cannabis in his system that might impair his driving. You know, come to work better, really. Yeah. I mean, that's, that is like pre precision driving by PC Rice here. Just have a look at that, the distance. Have a look at that, the distance. Yeah, yeah. that's a toit, toit box. Didn't happen like that very often. <laughs> Before being booked into custody, there's a result from the driver's drug test. Right. So yeah, so also tested positive for cannabis. So another offence to add to his list. All right, stay there for a minute. Obviously, mate, I don't know if my colleagues told you, you've tested positive for cannabis. So you're further under arrest, mission of driving whilst over specified limit for drugs, maybe cannabis. And also when they booked in the car, they found some cannabis, yeah. please cannabis. So you're further under arrested on suspicion of possession of cannabis. Not typical. Quite, quite calm and quite polite. But, you know. He's up to no good, isn't he? Putting everybody's lives at risk on the road, driving them speeds under the influence of cannabis in a stolen car, not even qualified to drive. We've not obviously not asked him any questions, but he's volunteered that he basically didn't know the car was stolen and somebody told him it was totally legit to drive. Uh, he just seems quite a uh, quite naive young lad, to be fair. Uh, just looks a bit out of his depth and a bit overwhelmed by it all. He's not massively older than, than my kids, to be fair. Thankfully, he's 17, he has got his whole life in front of him and hopefully what's happened to him tonight will make him realise, um, you know, what can happen, the consequences of his actions. It's not, this is not the place for you, this isn't, mate. I know what's happened's happened, this is not the place for you. So we'll be doing everything we can to get you out of here, okay? Thank you, I appreciate that. Get, get your gun as soon as you can, yeah? Genuinely do hope that he sorts himself out and makes something of his life and just doesn't get involved in the drugs and people taking advantage of him, because if he does, he's going to have no future at all. Big world out there, lots of possibilities for you. Just need to take them. Yeah. You. All right, you take care, won't you? you All right, mate. Yeah. See you later. Out on the motorways, young drivers are being targeted as part of a national crackdown on thefts from HGVs. I'll call it to 25 then. Halfway through a night shift, traffic cop Matt Cooling and his colleagues are on the lookout for a suspect Volvo. Luke from 29, half a mile from 27, so I'll be coming up behind you shortly. The car has been seen at the site of various thefts over previous weeks, including an incident just two nights earlier. We're looking for spotter vehicles that are going to be going up and down the, the network looking for lorries to you know, break into and have a look what they can steal from them. Might be three or four in a car. They'll go up and down all the lay-bys and services. Generally look for curtain siders because they can cut them open, see what the, uh, what the load is. And if it's worth nicking, they'll call up the lorry to come park next to them and offload. A call comes in from traffic cop Luke Christian who is behind the suspect Volvo. Luke's behind a vehicle that's linked to an old barrack job. He's just come down south on the M1, come off at 27 and done a loop, and now it's back on the M1 north. Within minutes, five police cars are tailing the Volvo and the cops decide to try and box it in on the motorway. Luke from 29, behind you. Once we've got another car with us, we're going to have to look for 10 speed. Boxing it in in lane 2. I'll go to the front, 2-0, take off side, 2-9, take near side, 2-3, take 
With four cars for the box and a safety car behind blocking traffic, the team are ready to strike. Yeah, we have we have Jump out for me. Just jump out. Hello. Sorry, Sorry, mate. You've been detained because this vehicle is linked to theft from lorries. Just keep your hands out of your pockets, mate. OK, so we're going to search the vehicle and you, see if you're going to to steal, do you understand? Perfectly fine. OK. What are you up to? I've just been to a bird's house. Oh, that's good. She nice. She's all right. It's a bit Let's take us off we're going to take off the motorway and we're going to put you in another car. Yeah. Ned, can he go in your car? Because I've got no room in mine. Well, we'll take him off. I've searched him, Ned. The suspects will be taken to the nearest services for a thorough search, so the road can be reopened. The one I've searched has got nothing on him other than a bit of money in. But we need to search the vehicle. So we'll take it off at the next junction where it's, where it's safe. You know, if anything, we've disturbed a group of spotters. So the vehicle is linked to, uh, you know, lorry thefts. At the services, officers run checks on the suspects and the car. Obviously, we've got no um, evidence to arrest him of any offence tonight, or the driver can't prove that his car's insured, ultimately. So, um, because it's not insured, we're going to seize it. Well, do you want to take it? Just to be sure we can't do all else. I mean, ultimately, it's really good disruption for us tonight, for them. We, we, know, we know, you know, the types of things that intelligence links those individuals to and this car, so, um, you know, hopefully they'll eventually start getting the message that, you know, each time they come into Derbyshire, they're going to get stopped or identified, and hopefully at some point they'll, they'll stop coming. Good luck, girls. See you, girls. See you, me. You know, they're released, they're free to go, but hopefully good disruption. You know, we've took the car off them for the fact they can't prove it's insured, and now they've got a long trip back up to Leeds. We're now committed, committed. Lane 1, Junction 28 northbound. Back on the M1 near Chesterfield, traffic cops Luke Christian and Carl Jackson are searching for a suspicious truck. Uh, a lock barrack, uh, a van that's dodgy, that's oh, on AMPR, is a different yeah, type of van to the one uh, that the number plates are on. Luke and other officers prepare to stop the lorry. I have directed the eye to go to. My suggestion is that the vehicles up ahead create a slow rolling roadblock to generate enough traffic and to bring the vehicle to a natural stop and that manner. Stand back. With officers slowing the traffic down, Carl still playing catch up on the other side of the motorway. Bring the traffic to complete stop, blockers. So this is the block they've put on. Whilst the traffic is held back, Luke and the team move in for a strike. Safety's on, go for it. Go, go, go. Right, slowing, slowing. In the back, so stand by. Carefully, I think, because he might try and ram his way out of us. Watch for the decal. Yeah, I'm waiting for the runners. Get out now! Open the door now! Open the door! Get out! Get out! Open the door now! Get out now! Well, he's just on behind your back, lad. Whoa. Keep your hands behind your back. What are you doing? Keep your hands behind your back. Too far, I've got the passenger. Whoa, what's going on, mate? You're a thief, mate, that's what you are. I haven't been doing nothing getting... Ah, oh, thumbs, mate. Yeah, don't worry, we've got to do The passenger is the same young man arrested by the team a few weeks earlier. Ah, serious, you, you aren't sure how proper it man's, mate. Ah, nothing. Ah, can you all loosen them? In a sec, we will, yeah. While the young man and the truck driver are detained, 
Luke searches the back of the lorry for stolen goods. Children's cycle helmets. So, um, 16 boxes of cycle helmets. Reasonable. With the suspects facing questioning at the station, Carl's arrived to help Luke get the vehicle recovered. It's a stolen truck from West Yorkshire, uh, stolen in the last month or so, I think it was. Uh, although it's an older truck, it could be worth some money to someone. Um, so it's good to get that recovered and stolen goods in the back as well, which you don't always get. Helmets for horse riding. Thefts from trucks have risen rapidly in recent years and around £8 million worth of goods are stolen every month. We get a lot of these jobs, we, we deal with them loads, um, so we know what we're looking for now. Um, and obviously it's their unlucky day for them, lucky day for us. Coming up... I'll just have a word with him. A hungry driver bites off more than he can chew. So the draw of a McDonald's burger is a major steal of car. In Derbyshire, traffic cop Carl Jackson is on patrol looking out for young drivers. Just have a word with him. Flying down there, didn't he? Carl's 15 miles north of Derby in Alfreton and wants to speak to the driver of a Ford Focus. I kind of look at vehicles uh, in a similar way you look at people and the body language of it, and just by the way it came past in that split second, uh, makes me think uh, I need to stop it. How are you? Living the dream and all that? Yeah, I literally just going back home now, mate. Ah, you're in a hurry to get into bed? Not really, no. Mate, right. you're going a bit quick there, pal. Yeah, I know, I was, one not I? Um, <laughs> have you got your licence on you, mate? Is it your motor? Yeah, it's my Is it? Yes. Does she know you're driving it like that? No, she probably don't know. She'll be telling you off. She'll be banning your front bedroom if she catches you driving like that. <laughs> Have you got a full licence? No. no. Mate, you might as well tell me that from the start, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Does she know you're in this car? Yeah, mostly, no. So you've taken it without her consent? Yeah, I've just talked about it. Well, that's even worse. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. I'll tell you what, let's give her a call. Right, and speak to her, yeah. because it's her car and you've, te you've technically nicked it off her. Yeah. All right, G give her a ring. You can get out, mate. You're, you can go if you want, pal. You're, you're not involved, <laughs> are you? You're just uh, driving shot, riding shotgun. Baby girl. Yeah, you could do, couldn't you? I've just been called on to stay. No. Let, let me just speak uh, to her. Yeah, I... It's police. I've, I've caught your, your fella that you're probably going to fall out with now, uh, driving a bit silly, and he, he's obviously in your car. Did you? You're asleep. Your fella's mates just come in, come into the house because your your babies are there asleep. So you can walk you can walk round the corner and get this car and drive it back onto your driveway. But yeah, so come 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 round and get your car. That's good to bring me a fag. He says he says he says bring him a fag. I wouldn't. He's nicked your car. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See ya. Bye. Uh, how old are you? I'm 23, mate. 24 nearly. You think you'd know better, wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah You've yeah, committed yeah, a couple yeah. of offences. Yeah. No insurance, no licence offences, yeah? I thought I was on air insurance, but obviously that's still only for thing the other way next to it. Yeah, you're not insured if you're driving with your mate next year yeah, and you've got yeah, no L yeah. plates on and you've stolen a car. Yeah. Don't, it, don't, it don't work that way. Where have you been? It's what, literally, I went to Tamaki's, had some makers and that, and then I come back. Is that, is, is that what you went for? You could have yeah, yeah. walked, walked there. I know, I know, I'm stupid, man. Stupid. So the temptation, the draw of a McDonald's burger yeah, is a major steal of car. Yeah. You've obviously caught me in a good mood because I haven't seized your car because it's not your car. It would have been a big bill, wouldn't it? It would have been a massive bill, hundreds and hundreds of pounds to get it back. You've got a young family, but you don't need the extra cost, do you? 
So I've been a bit generous there, but your honesty's done that. Oh, who's this? Is this is this the lucky lady? Yeah. Uh, I'll give you the key for this then. You can take it home. It's up to you if you make him walk. I'd make him walk. Cheers, Paul. Thank you. Nice off that, mate. Yeah, all right. A little unusual, that. I've let that go home. He's just been an idiot. There's no necessity to arrest him. I might as well let him go home and I'll go and find some criminals. So he'll get hefty fines for the twock from the court. He'll be fined for no insurance and no licence and find himself with points that will cost him money as well. So um, it's been an expensive McDonald's. Young drivers are kind of blamed for a lot of things, really. People always mention young drivers as being at fault for various things because of their inexperience, and there's an element of that. Um, as you get life experience driving on the road, you, you kind of perhaps mellow out a bit as you get older and drive more sensibly. I think people that, at that age, they're just oblivious to the risk or they're not, they're not bothered. And they, they just treat it like a game, but it can so quickly change from you know, being a bit of a laugh to having the police chasing you to you know, death and destruction of your, of your friends and other people. In this episode... Lane two, speed one, three, zero. The BMW driver who led police on a high-speed pursuit on the M1... Oh, ..pleaded guilty to dangerous driving, driving with no licence and no insurance, failing to provide a drugs test and possession of Class B drugs. He's currently awaiting sentencing. The 17 year old who was driving a stolen car. The car's been reported stolen, okay. Yep. Was released under investigation for theft of the car, but has been charged with driving without a license and no insurance. No action has been taken for any drug driving offences. The driver of the car full of suspected lorry thieves was reported for driving with no insurance. Get out! Get out! Get out! Get the door now! The passenger in the lorry containing stolen helmets, who had been arrested four weeks earlier, is currently released under investigation. Whoa, what's going on, mate? You're a thief, mate. That's what you've been doing. Nothing. The lorry driver has also been released under investigation while the police further their inquiries. The drawer of a McDonald's burger is a major steal of car. The man who took his girlfriend's car was reported for driving the car without consent, no licence and no insurance. He's awaiting sentencing. Well, he's going to be arrested for causing death by dangerous driving. And the driver who ploughed into a motorcyclist, killing her pleaded guilty to causing death by dangerous driving. I think that's positive for cocaine, what do you think? He was retested at the police station for drugs, but despite showing trace amounts of cocaine in his system, it was not enough to take him over the prescribed legal limit. Police believe he may have experienced a micro-sleep, which caused the crash. That is where somebody just literally blanks out, drifts off, and all of a sudden, they come to, it is a tough lesson for a young driver to learn and, and you've caused the death of somebody else and you will never get over that. Um, and everybody needs to be mindful of that. He was sentenced to six months in prison, suspended for two years, 300 hours of community service, tagged for six months and has been banned from driving for two years. More